Hello. So I'm XXX <laughs> reporting for XXX. Sorry, I forgot to put the title of the group. <laughs> um, but um, the moderator was Louise Ivers. Um, I'm the rapporteur and um, the secretary of focal point was um, David Olson. And uh, our um, grape, uh, group um, breakout session was about monitoring and evaluation. Um, on. Ah, okay. And the objectives were how to ensure effective m and &E to assess roadmap impact. So this is basically the purpose of, uh, of what we intend as monitoring and evaluation. And specifically in the group, we discussed about how to harmonize existing mechanisms to uh, optimize this uh, monitoring and evaluation activities and how to mutualize on our uh, meaning partners, countries, programs, uh, collective experiences and initiatives to do so. Um, it was a very fruitful discussion and we had a, a very active group both in the chat and, and in, the, um, in the voice <laughs> in the comments um, and uh, very, very well moderated by Louise. And I tried to um, summarize what we discussed in this slide uh, the first one is um, a technical challenge that is um, somehow specific to cholera, although many other diseases um, actually have a multi-sectoral approach. But um, it's not just disease indicators and surveillance indicators that we are wanting to monitor, but development ones. And I think that the first group also mentioned the challenge of um, including uh, uh, indicators that are not standard epidemiological ones like WASH indicators, uh, um, GM, uh, uh, the, <laughs> that one, <laughs> and, uh, and SDGs uh, indicators and so on. So that's a, a, it's a big challenge that we, we try to, to discuss and address in the recommendations. Another one is funding gaps. Um, when it comes to m &E activities, uh, uh, these are often neglected by, by donors and, and implementing partners. Um, there is often clear funding streams to, for example, implement an OCV campaign, but not so much for a coverage survey and for related and many activities. Um, linked to that is also roles and responsibilities. Who is actually responsible for m and &E? um, we know who is responsible for implementing a program, but um, often this aspect is, is a bit neglected in identifying exactly uh, who is responsible, which partner, et cetera, et cetera. The end link to that also, um, what dedicated human resources we have in countries for that. We, need, we know that it's not just um, an activity that has to happen for a specific program, but it has to be um, an activity well integrated in the NCP with uh, dedicated uh, human resources and dedicated systems. Going back to what I was saying at the beginning, dedicated system for epidemiological surveillance are somehow standardized, although we know already the um, limitations and sometimes the weaknesses in, in, in certain countries affected by cholera with regards to these systems. The other systems in terms of monitoring, wash and other aspects are even more so <laughs> neglected often by, by, this, um, by the NCPs. Um, so we need dedicated systems. And then one is also the lack of guidance. The GTFCC has provided a framework. There are 16 core indicators, but there is uh, obviously a need to, to have clear guidance on how uh, these uh, 16 indicators should be monitored um, specifically. Which brings me to the recommendations. Um, the first one is really clarify the objectives of m &E. We discussed uh, extensively about this uh, dualism between um, uh, uh, m &E activity that is helpful for the country. And this, we know, we all think and we all agree that this is the primarily, primarily the objective of, uh, of the m and &E activities to assess progress and impact. So they should be useful for the, for the country. But then we are all sitting here very removed from the countries at a global level. And we have to recognize that this is also important for the GTFCC and the global community to establish a global dossier of evidence and demonstrate the progress towards the, the roadmap. 
Um, so this dualism is <laughs> reflected in how the process um, should uh, pan out in, in, at the country level. It should be a flexible pro <laughs> process that achieves both objectives. And flexible, the flexibility is between uh, a process that is adaptable to the country context. Every country is different. There was a, uh, in, uh, in our group, we had, uh, uh, for example, uh, representatives from Yemen, a country um, afflicted by conflict, and other countries that are not in a, in a fragile setting. And, and so we have to make sure that these uh, many indicators can be adapted and can be useful for, for both contexts and, and many other contexts in the country. So every, every country is different. At the same time, they can be completely adaptable because we need some standardization for the, for the global level. Um, otherwise, we will never speak the same language and we will never be able to monitor the progress towards the, gro the global roadmap, as, as we said before. Um, <laughs> once we have clear how the objectives are, what the objectives should be and how, to <laughs> how they should be flexible, then of course we have to develop guidance on how to achieve this ME in the technical pillars. As we said, certain uh, health-related technical pillars um, have already standard approaches, uh, coverage surveys, surveillance. Others uh, need um, a lot more uh, guidance and, and, uh, and uh, tools. Um, also at the planning stage, it's not just about giving a global gui guidance, but this, this guidance should be then translated in the m and &E, in the, in the m and &E chapter, let's say, of the NCP. So we should ensure at this uh, planning stage that there is a, an m and &E framework um, from the beginning, uh, describing implementing partners, roles and responsibilities, and uh, resources required. I think this is, I was very happy to see that group one had very similar recommendations as well because, um, about this, and ensure that, with this toolbox of guidance and people. Um, we also, as the GTFCC, as the newly created CSP, we, we provide support to the countries to implement, so technical support and, and of course, um, financial support to, to conduct this, uh, these activities. And I think that's the last point. Thank you. <laughs>